Joe Mullings from 160 Studios in Delray Beach. And joining me from around the other side of the world today from Israel is Michal Geva. Michal is the managing partner at TriVentures and also Eyal Zimlichman. Eyal is the Chief Medical Officer and Chief Innovation Officer at Sheba Medical Center. Friends, it's good to see you again. Great to be with you, Joe. Good to see you, Joe. Yeah. And uh, I'm especially excited to chat today. Uh, as usual, we're gonna chat about technology, we're gonna chat about data, but I'm also um, really interested to share with the world what Israel is successfully doing um, on the deployment of the vaccination protocol uh, in a country of 9 million people, uh, the country has had unbelievable success in the deployment and arguably may be experiencing the world's biggest clinical trial real time with tremendous consequences uh, right in front of our eyes. I have some stats here that you know, right now as of January 19th, more than 25% of the population have received their first vaccine dose, and a half a million and probably more have received both. And to just give a sense of the rate of vaccination, 32.4 people per 100, compared to the US's 4.8 um, per 100. And so with that, Israel has also incorporated its multi-decade use of data to allowing us to have a very controlled study under our hands and perhaps give us some insight as to what other countries and or regions will uh, go through. So, Ial, you at Sheba uh, are a chief innovation officer and a chief medical officer. I don't know many sort of healthcare organizations that wrap those up, but it's very indicative of the uh, medical device and healthcare ecosystem. Can you take us in on this and what are you seeing? Well, um, you know, first of all, um, you know, it, it's been quite um, an experience in the past few weeks um, with, with the vaccination. Um, you know, we've taken this, the country has taken this as uh, first priority. Uh, you know, just putting one and one together, understanding that our only way out of this terrible pandemic is through the vaccine. It's not going to go away any other way. Uh, and then putting our minds to it. And you've seen it all around from politicians to, uh, of course, the healthcare leadership and to the public. You know, putting this as the number one issue on everybody's agenda. Um, and, and that was quite nice to see because we don't see that typically with vaccinations. Every year we have to go through uh, flu vaccinations. We have to get people on board. It's, a, it's, it's quite a mess. But this time, you know, people have been coming to us. Um, so, so it's... Sheba is right in the middle of all this because we've taken the leadership role in terms of uh, vaccinating. We've got huge numbers of vaccines. We're vaccinating 24 seven inside the hospital, seven days a week. And you know, in Israel, when you do something on, on the Sabbath, on Saturday, uh, it's very uncommon, but here there was no question uh, that this is going to go on seven days a week. Um, and we've seen huge numbers come in. We've vaccinated uh, on some days, you know, about 10,000 people. Um, and this is just one, location. Imagine many such locations around the country, of course, not of this magnitude, but uh, of uh, smaller numbers. And um, and so it's been, you know, quite a journey so far. Um, a lot that we've learned already, and I'm sure a lot that we're going to pick up only in retrospect, going, looking back at this very unique uh, operation. Mm. Michal, with Tri Ventures, that is a, uh, a venture firm that focuses especially on the use of digital and data in solving healthcare solutions around the world. Um, what, what observations have you had as, uh, again, you were the first female venture capitalist in Israel uh, and certainly have been driving the use of data and information to solve the healthcare conundrum in the world through Israel. So what have you seen? First of all, I really think that this huge operation and priority of vaccination is a result of our digitalized health system. You know, Israel became a pilot environment for the world because of several different reasons. One is, you mentioned, we're a small country with only 9 million people. We have 100% of our population is insured under only four HMOs. But not less important than that, is that we have 25 years of personal data that is digitalized. 
hospitals like Shiba, HMOs are collecting a lot of data. And over the years, uh, we are as consumers, we're as patients, as population, we are now um, using and consuming our healthcare in a very digitalized way on apps, emails, SMSs. Now, if you put those two things together, the greatest example of how digital health is related to each one of us is actually this. Think about a country that decided to go and vaccinate its population. First, it was the 80 year old people, right? So with a click of a button, you can basically pull out the information of all the 80 year olds. The week after, we extended it to 70 year olds, 60, 50. Today, we're at 40 year olds. Okay, but it's all with a click of a button and without getting any personal touch, you know, you could um, um, reach out to the relevant population, people that are with comorbidities or risk factors, they're all getting the priorities, but this is all pulled in a digitalized way, um, conveyed to the patient in a digitalized way. When I personally got my um, uh, invitation for the vaccine, I just got an email, press a button. In a press of a button I got when I, uh, you know, the scheduling, it populated my uh, calendar. I went with my app, I showed the, the, the barcode, and in three minutes I was out. My next vaccination was already in my calendar in an automatic way, and I hadn't had the chance to talk to anybody. You know, so the way that we as people consume healthcare in Israel is tremendously digitalized. And you add that the ability of having hospitals like Shiva and community hospitals and, and clinics all over the country enables this huge, um, huge um, uh, operation. Now, on top of that, one of the reasons we got priorities for this um, kind of operation is because we allowed and we agreed to share information with pharma companies like Pfizer and Moderna and the World Health Organization. So think about it, just like you said, Joe, all of a sudden, this is a real scaled up clinical study of millions of people. Now, by the way, you mentioned earlier that um, a week ago we had the numbers you mentioned, but today it's 2.7 million people that have been vaccinated, over 30% of the population with one vaccine and over 15% of our population already with two vaccines. So very, very soon we'll see the outcome of that. You know, is, Israel's been uh, at the forefront for those of us that pay attention on the data side. It was early in the pandemic. Uh, I think a lot of people's heads spun for two reasons. When we were able to track if somebody had been identified as positive, COVID positive, Israel was able to look at cell phones and see who was in the proximity of that person and be able to send out a message saying, note, um, you were in the proximity of this person who had been positive, and that data then could be empowering to uh, potentially going to get tested and or uh, uh, you know, make a decision which way you would move in regards to healthcare. Now we're able to query, uh, as you said, age groups and profiles and health profiles with uh, preconditions that might put somebody at risk. There are people watching this who are going super cool, like myself. This is unbelievable. Look how technology can keep us safe and allow us to scale a solution. And then there are others who are going to say, do I want to give up my personal information uh, at scale? And what do I lose from a sort of privacy act? What, what are the thoughts in Israel around that? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll start. Yeah. Um, so um, you know, it's obviously it's it's a sensitive issue everywhere, and, and also in Israel. Um, I think uh, the Israeli public, at, you know, at large is uh, you know has confidence in the healthcare providers that uh, they are keeping their their data safe, and and you know that's what happens. I mean, even everything that Michal just um, described. All of that is being done uh, with, you know, the uttermost uh, privacy to data. Nothing, uh, of course, that is um, identified 
is leaving the um, you know the medical providers or the uh, payers, um, and you know it's in that regard everything is 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 very safe. Even when we're talking about sharing information with some of the pharma companies or the WHO, it's never done on a patient level. Of course, it's only on a population level. You know, saying what percent of the population had this or that side effect, what percent of the population got sick after one week following the second vaccine, and so on. So that type of data can be, of course, um, um, you know, relevant to other countries as they try to learn um, how things are done, and also as post-marketing surveillance uh, for for the uh, for the uh, vaccine. Uh, so you know, I think there's um, a lot of um, uh, efforts being done to maintain patient privacy. We don't see a you know an outcry here locally that maybe you would have seen in other countries, and I've. You know, I spent a lot of time in some of the European countries that are even more sensitive than the U.S. to privacy, and, and I, I know how that uh, looks like. We we don't have that outcry here. Uh, you did mention the um, uh, the idea with the uh, proximity through the cell phone. That was something that was done early on uh, because it was approved by the um, you know the justice office and so on in the government. But later on, they stopped that because um, there were some concerns and they didn't want to take any chances. So it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, so I think at large, uh, we're able to, uh, to um, find the, the ways to do this and, and have the benefit of the data and sharing the data and so on without the risk of, uh, of privacy. Mm -hmm. Michal, with Tri Ventures and your experience, uh, digital and data can be an enormous fulcrum that gives us better informed abilities to make decisions and then quickly take action. Uh, you mentioned Moderna, Pfizer, WHO, Shiba, Tri Ventures, technology. This is an open architecture mentality solution. It's a very unique time in the history of the world. What are going to be the benefits coming out of this as people watch from around the world what happens in Israel with this type of speed, scale, and scope of a potential solution? Yeah, I think that. Israel will become a pilot very fast. I believe in probably a month or two, most of our population will be vaccinated. Um, we will have a lot of the data that have been accumulated and the ability to slice and dice the data to be able to present, share um, on a population level, of course, um, the progression or the progression of the disease. And um, I think that this is the reason that we are being uh, honored by being this pilot to, to really see what it will be having a whole country or most of the country, uh, very high percentages of the country vaccinated and see where it, how we will continue and fight this, um, this, disease, this uh, huge uh, fight between um, humanity and nature. Yeah, no doubt. And it's interesting because I've spent, you know, a lot of time with Israel and coming from a nation that is generally accustomed with being surveilled for its own survival. Uh, and with the use of digital and data right out of uh, high school into uh, whether your commitment is on the military side and with technology in general, you go down to Herzliya, it's like little Silicon Valley. Uh, this is a shining moment for Israel. Do you think that that is culturally centric based upon where you are today? And what would you tell other nations that uh, have the same opportunity to do so, uh, but maybe are influenced by more social issues, uh, but weighing consequence versus the trade-off? Yeah. I'll say, first of all, I think Israel is, um, you know, in many regards, much more pragmatic. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we do what we need to do. Um, you know, if there are compromises along the way, we understand that uh, you cannot eat an egg without breaking the shell. And so there are things that you need to, uh, um, to, to put on the side. Of course, um, you know, there are limits to everything, but very pragmatic uh, approach. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, I could give a couple, but something that we've just done at Chiba, um, in the past couple of months, you know, one of the things that's very uh, critical to do is contact tracing. When you have somebody who was found to be positive with the virus, you want to know who was 
be in close proximity with. We have used a defense um, um, software that uh, works off the surveillance cameras inside Chiba. We have about 700 surveillance cameras inside Chiba. And once you implement the software, it's spatial recognition. Um, if you've seen Fauda, you know what it's usually used for. Um, and with this, we're able to, uh, to identify, upload to the system an individual who was found to be positive, and then have the system run back 48 hours or 72 hours and pop up to us who are the other individuals who were in close proximity. And you could define the proximity. You can say, you know, three feet, four feet, six feet. And you could say how long was was the, the you know whether in contact five minutes ten minutes fifteen minutes. Once you set those parameters, the AI will pop up the individuals who were in contact with that person. You could take a you know you have a photo of their face so you know if they had a mask on or not. And if they didn't, they need to go into uh, into uh, quarantine, of course. So you know that's how we call them up. We found that during this contact tracing with the technology it takes about uh, a quarter of the time. And then when you don't have this technology, and also you end up uh, putting in quarantine about 40% less uh, with this technology. And that of course saves manpower, um, personnel, clinical personnel in the hospital that you know, obviously in times of emergency is, um, is, is an important issue. You know, when I tell this story uh, to uh, other countries in some of the uh, webinars we have, people are first of all appalled with the idea that we're doing facial recognition. So, you know, I typically say the surveillance cameras are only in public areas. We don't have them in patient rooms or private locations, bathrooms, of course, and, and so on, only in the public areas. Uh, but even still, I think that with some countries, this wouldn't go, this type of, uh, of solution. I don't know if that's the right reason because we've been, been using it for the past six months or so with a huge and clear benefit. And that's what I mean with being pragmatic. If you have a good solution and you don't have the right reason why not to use it, we should find the right reason to use it. And that's what we're doing here. Mm. I love that solution. And it's just, a, it's a baseline for moments like this. You know, consequences always drive behavior. And right. uh, having this as a tool and a choice to have as a tool, I'd rather have that choice than not have it at all. Uh, Michal, what would you like to leave us with as we uh, close out today? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on what this means potentially as an indicator of, getting this pandemic under control and uh, what as a venture capitalist and a mom and a business person, uh, what would you like to leave our viewers with? Well, I think that um, we'll have to see how the vaccination is working out in a pilot environment. And soon I uh, hope uh, AI will be able to share with us and with the world that uh, vaccine, herd vaccination is uh, helping to reduce um, 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 our, the numbers and the statistics. Um, as a technology person, I really think that sometimes technology shines. And this, is, this year has been a tremendous um, tipping point for digital health. We're seeing how it is embraced by people much faster than we ever thought, um, from people using telemedicine all the way to personalized health that helps us vaccinate people um, faster. Um, and I understand the fear of technology. It is natural. But I think that just like Ayala said, we have to be smart on when using it not replacing people, but it's really augmenting us on many different levels that we never thought we will use. And I think it's benefiting for the most part, um, our lives. 20 for digital healthcare investments was $80 billion worldwide uh, in 2020. So the, the world is obviously embracing it and allowing us to bring solutions like Israel and uh, its technologists and healthcare professionals are demonstrating, I think, a great model for the rest of the world. Well, Michal, as always, it's great to see you. Yeah, same from, from my seat again with you, with Sheba. Hopefully when they clear this up, uh, I'll be over there to uh, enjoy some time together. But uh, I appreciate your time from both of you. 
Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person. Yeah. Misha, be well. Say hello to everybody over there. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you. This has been Joe Mullings from 160 Studios. Be well.